Hello everyone. My name is Janame Jaya. My friends and colleagues call me Jan May. I'm an electrical engineer currently living in Montreal, Canada. In this video, I'll talk a bit about my academic background. I will also briefly describe some of my past technical projects. My journey in electrical engineering started more than a decade ago in 2006. I earned my bachelor's degree in electrical engineering in 2010. Later on, I decided to pursue my master's degree in electrical engineering, specializing in power electronics. It was at this point in my academic career that I took building and designing hardware seriously. For my master's thesis, I focused on designing and building a low-cost network analyzer. Network analyzer or frequency response analyzers are commercially available, but they are pretty expensive. The goal of my master's thesis was to build a low-cost network analyzer to get Bode plots of simple passive uh, networks such as RC, RLC over a frequency range 10 Hz to 100 kHz. After graduation, I joined Department of Electrical Engineering, IASC Bangalore as a research associate. My responsibilities as a research associate was to uh, simulate DC-DC converters in real time on an FPGA platform. Till this point, I had worked with TI's MSP430 microcontroller programming it in C language. At IASC, I learned VHDL and I was able to produce few technical documents. So let me show you the screenshots of few technical documents I prepared while at IASC on my tiny computer. So this is the contents of the manual. It has details related to basic operations such as generation of PWM pulses and also means to generate a sine wave. So let me take you to this chapter. In this chapter, uh, the procedure to generate a triangle wave is provided. Here we see the VHDL code. Moving on, this is the continuation of the code. And finally, the code ends here for generation of this triangle wave. And this is the simulation and experimental results. Now moving on, here is my website. I have put all my technical documents uh, here. The website is janamejayachanegoda.com. It's pretty easy to remember. I haven't had the time to put all my latest articles on my website as I was busy shooting this video. Now moving on. So this is the LinkedIn article where I put the equations, VHDL code and the results of the converter I simulated uh, as my tenure as a research associate. Now moving on. Here is the re research paper that I was able to get out of the analysis I had uh, performed as my uh, as a research associate. I'll quickly walk, uh, walk you through the most important aspects of this paper. So these are the parameters of the converter that was simulated. This is the high definition photo which provides the flow of logic. And here we find the results and comparison between the average and switching model of a boost converter. Apart from VHDL, I have been extensively using Python. Here is one of the many plots which I have created by uh, Python scripts. Here is the script. This script takes in a .csv file and plots it along x and y axis. Uh, this is the uh, .csv file being plotted uh, right now. So any file which you, you get from the oscilloscope can be reproduced in a very clean fashion by using Python scripts. I highly recommend that you check out this website, openpowerelect.net. Uh, this is created by my colleagues. I use Python and Perl scripts created by them. If you get, if you get to Git, GitLab and search for OpalXNet group, you will find many useful scripts. I use wiki to PDF script on almost a weekly basis. So here is, this is my initial text file which, uh, which uh, I have written in Vim. And if you are not using Vim, please uh, install it as soon as possible and use it immediately. It is one of the best text editors out there. Coming back to the script, on the right we see the highlighted portion which refers to one slide of my presentation. This greatly simplifies the effort needed to make a presentation as you can convert dot .text files directly to beautiful PDFs. Moving on, I highly recommend you to check out this book, Simulating Nonlinear Circuits with Python Power Electronics. It's an open source simulator. 
And here is a website for that, uh, if you want to download that simulator, Python Power Electronics. Moving on, Udemy is also a great resource for learning Python. Uh, I have learned Python by a couple of courses uh, by using Udemy. Here, uh, lastly, you can go through the LinkedIn article which describes the C code written by me. I will explain the purpose of this code later in my video. My experience as a research associate helped me optimize my simulations by using C functions, MATLAB functions and scripts instead of block diagrams. After gaining invaluable research experience at IASC, I later joined University of Ontario Institute of Technology to pursue my PhD. For the first uh, one and a half years, I took courses and classes relevant to my field in order to gain knowledge. Later on, I also took courses via Coursera.org to further strengthen my background in power electronics. Out of all the courses I took, I would like to mention four important courses which greatly uh, helped me strengthen my knowledge. First was Transportation Electrification by my professor Sheldon Williamson. It helped me gain better perspective of power electronic systems used for electric vehicle applications. Second was Power Management for PV Systems taught by Professor Olivier Trescasis. Here I extensively used the simulation software Flex which I used later on in my PhD uh, program. The third course was Electronic Product Design by Dr. Najat Abdul Aziz. It was at this point I started to use C2000 series microcontroller and also got a better understanding of designing PCBs. I designed all my PCBs uh, using KiCad which I learned uh, while taking this course. And lastly, I would like to mention Power Converter Systems by Dr. Bin Wu. So this course was structured as five different uh, assignments. And each project uh, helped me gain a better perspective of power converter systems and also better grip on simulating power converter systems in MATLAB and Simulink. Let me walk you through some of the low resolution photos of these uh, projects on my laptop. Okay, these courses often involved simulation to find harmonic distortion by FFT analysis. Let me just quickly browse through all the projects. Let me show you some low resolution screenshots. Uh, this was the first project we started with uh, simulating diode rectifiers. Later on we moved into space vector modulation schemes. The, th the third project was about simulation of inverters. This project was about in-phase disposition uh, of modulation schemes. And the last project was on current source converters. So these are some of the MATLAB and Simulink blocks I was able to uh, do for the assignments. So this is the last of them. After completing my courses, now focus shifted on research. I started to review some of the past technical publications available in my area. The research problem given to me was to build a power converter stage for DC fast charging. So uh, the publication that I, I had reviewed, I was able to present it at a conference in Brazil. Later on, I devised my modulation scheme for a three-phase buck rectifier. And this scheme, I was able to carry out some simulation and the results obtained from this simulation, I was able to present at another conference in Tampa, Florida. Now I would like to take some time to explain the hardware that I built as part of my PhD thesis. So we'll move to the laptop. I'll show you some photos, which will greatly help you in understanding what I did. So this was the first PCB I designed. This is one leg of the converter. The snubber circuit uh, sits right uh, in between uh, the PCB. So you can also find out the design of a basic RC snubber circuit in my LinkedIn articles. So this is one of the shanks of the PCB. So this provides both mechanical grip and also electrical connection to other legs of the PCB. Now let's go move on to the screenshots. 
So this LinkedIn article provides more details such as operating parameters, experimental waveforms, and a brief explanation of design of passives. So this is one leg of the converter. Uh, there's a site called eurocircuits.com. If you upload the Gerber files that you have generated using any software, Altium, Mentor Graphics, uh, KiteCAD, or any uh, uh, PCB making software, it will show you the picture of how the PCB is going to look like. All three legs, uh, uh, all three legs have been connected with the help of copper bus bars. This is pretty elegant. So this figure provides a direct mapping from the schematic to the hardware. Uh, this LinkedIn article provides details about the design of inductor using area product approach. So the, out of all the many passives that were used to build this converter, I give the design process for an inductor. Uh, I wound it using, I bought the bobbin and wound it using uh, appropriate gauge of wire. So this article just provides the details about it. So I would like to talk about the second PCB that I used for my project. So this is the analog front end PCB and uh, this is how it looks. Uh, this is the bare board and the populated board looks like this. So for this I used SMD components unlike my previous board where I used only through hole components which I was able to solder myself. For this, I had to ask the manufacturers quick circuits uh, in Scarborough to populate this board. So let me show you uh, some details about this board via screenshots. Okay, so this is uh, one of the many LinkedIn articles where I talk about the hardware design of uh, analog front end. So this is the voltage sensor design where I talk about what would be the peak correspond to which DC voltage. This is the design of passives and here I talk about the op amp stage where I have to provide a gain of 1 by 3 and also provide uh, an offset of 1.65 volt because the C2000, the ADC on the C2000 board is unipolar. So these are the schematics I was able to get using KiCad. And this is the schematic of the voltage sensor. And this is how the PCB has been uh, sectionalized into. So I have the voltage follower which provides 1.65 volt offset and I have the stage which provides a gain of 1 by 3. So this is a PCB. Again, uh, I used Eurocircuits.com, uploaded my Gerber files to generate this diagram. So the purpose the purpose of using analog front end was to track the grid voltage because in order uh, my modulating waves that I generated should always be in sync with the grid voltage. Okay. Now I'll talk about the uh, controller that I used to implement my algorithm. So the controller that I used was C2000 microcontroller. This is the C2000 microcontroller by Texas Instrument. This is pretty versatile and also uh, pretty cheap, pretty low cost compared to other controllers such as DSpace and uh, expensive hardware. So I was able to, uh, let me show you some screenshots where I talk about uh, the algorithm implemented in C2000 microcontroller. So this is the analog front end LinkedIn article. So. I have used the C2000 Piccolo launch pad. So this launch pad has multiple booster packs available, which makes it uh, convenient to have an external DAC if needed. The compatibility of these booster packs can be assessed by using uh, this site. So this was the I was able to match the 12 bit external DAC that I used with my with the launch pad that I have been using. So this is the 12 bit uh, DAC that I eventually used. So this is the code for SPA initialization. This is how I communicated with the DAC. And this is how I'm uh, it has eight channels. I'm using four of those eight channels 
to uh, sense my modulating waves. So this was the contribution of my thesis where I was able to decrease the computational intensity or make my modulation scheme less resource hungry. You can see that the carrier based modulation scheme uses less memory and also the execution time is also greatly reduced. The space vector based modulation technique was being used in literature. I proposed a carrier based technique that was the contribution of my thesis. After successfully implementing my algorithm in hardware, I was able to successfully defend my thesis and graduate with a PhD degree in electrical engineering in May 2018. There were a lot of skills that I developed as a PhD candidate. Uh, the top three skills that I would say was one was the ability to learn any new technology because learning any new technology is like learning a new language. I am learning French right now. So the you try to identify the hardest aspect of the technology or that uh, skill. So in French the grammar is the hardest. So I am trying to strengthen my grammar skills by using apps which have grammar bots where you can text back and forth. Another thing that I learned was to approach any problems right from the fundamentals. You go from basic circuit theory, math and work your way up. And the last skill that was very important that I thought was when to give up on an approach while solving a problem. Because as a researcher, we, I might get fixated on a particular approach because I have spent a lot of time on that approach for solving a problem. But uh, as in PhD, just as in life, there is no use in holding on to an approach which does not work just because there was a lot of time spent in making that mistake. So we should try to go for an alternate approach which would help us move forward. After graduating from school in May 2018, I joined the aerospace industry where I was actively involved in developing uh, electrical systems for space applications, specifically the motor drive for stepper motors. Stepper motors are extensively, extensively used in antenna pointing mechanism and also in robotics applications. I have documented my industry experience in various LinkedIn articles. So let me take you through the last screenshots of this presentation. So these articles provide a broader picture of my experience in the aerospace industry. So this article provides fundamentals of worst case circuit analysis because I spent a lot of time doing worst case circuit analysis of the mechanism driving electronics that I was working with. Here I have written about the EMC requirements that are needed for space systems. And finally, this is an article about GAN devices. So GAN devices have being, are being used in aerospace applications and uh, this is an exciting time to be, uh, to be living in as wideband gap devices are taking the power electronics industry by a storm. So this would be uh, something that would be looked at, at uh, by aerospace companies. Thank you very much for watching this video. If you find the contents of this video useful in any way, please like and share so that it is visible to a greater audience, which will help me connect with more like-minded people. Because I think there are engineers out there who would be interested to connect with me because not only do I have technical competence, I have the ability to effectively communicate my ideas to both technical and non-technical audiences. Have a great day. Thank you very much. Bye.